This video starts a series of videos that will talk about the different kinds of galaxies uh, in our universe and their distribution. The, this video actually has kind of a tangent topic at the start, the Messier catalog, the Messier catalog. And uh, then we'll talk about the zone of avoidance, where we see galaxies on the sky and where we don't. So we're going to discuss uh, spiral galaxies, barred spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, and kind of catalog them, and also irregular uh, shaped galaxies. And then in this video, talk about uh, galaxies we can see in some place on the sky, but not. And does that mean that the Milky Way is at a special location in the universe? So the Messier catalog. Messier was a French astronomer who became interested in comets after seeing a, a brilliant comet in, early in his life. Uh, he was uh, hunting for comets with a telescope, small telescope, and he did this in the more the late 1700s. Um, as he was looking for comets, he would sometimes be distracted because he would find a fuzzy patch of light on the sky that kind of looked like a comet uh, at great distance from the sun. But uh, this fuzzy patch would not move from night to night. No, it did not move from night to night. So he made a list of these objects that didn't move. Uh, in his lifetime, it did not have 110 objects, but he took notes of things that he had observed and not put in his catalog. So later, it was the catalog was officially expanded, or semi-officially, to about 110 objects. It's a very popular list for amateur astronomers. Uh, the objects here tend to be the brighter, interesting clusters and, constel and uh, galaxies. Uh, planetary nebula and so forth. So it's a very popular list. It's worth your time uh, looking at a YouTube video. I'm not going to do it now, but if you do a search in YouTube for Greenberg and Messier, I, I would imagine it would be at the top of the search that uh, would return back. So Messier did not see these objects move through the stars, through the constellations. Do these objects orbit the sun? The answer is no. They do not orbit the sun. The planets, the moon, uh, those move through the constellations because of the motion of being close to us. Uh, these objects in Messier's catalog are great distances from us. They do not orbit the sun and uh, consequently uh, have this more fixed position among the stars. So here's uh, one uh, compilation, sort of representative. I don't actually think these are photo all photographs, but uh, gives you kind of a... a overview of what we have here. Uh, I think most of the Messier objects are star clusters, either globular clusters or uh, open clusters. Um, and then the next most popular category would be the galaxies in this cluster, in the uh, catalog. But uh, Messier catalog. On the sky where they're found, we see clusters of uh, objects. The uh, the yellow circles, I believe, are open clusters, galactic clusters, with a few hundred to a thousand stars. The yellow circle with the cross in it are the globular clusters, up to a million. Uh, the red circles are galaxies, and uh, so that, that just gives you a list of, uh, of things to look at here. Um, green planetary nebula. Um, so there we are, how they're distributed across the sky. And there is a connection between open clusters and the Milky Way. Uh, our question about to consider here, is there some connection between uh, galaxies and the Milky Way? So let's go a little further if we can here in, uh, in doing this. So, well, this chart shows the locations of galaxies, each dot on the chart is a galaxy. And we see them various places across the sky. But there is a zone of avoidance, a place on the sky where there we cannot see galaxies. It's called the zone of avoidance. So this is a, a map of where the galaxies are using visible light. Would there be any reason that we could not see galaxies on the sky? And this, hopefully, uh, my students have read the whole reading assignment to be able to answer this question. Uh, but using visible light, there's a, 
a hint from past videos about our difficulty in seeing the center of the Milky Way galaxy using visible light. The same difficulty applies to seeing galaxies, and it's a clue as to the location of the galaxies. And the reason we can't see the galaxies is dust in the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. The, the Milky Way runs on this uh, shape on this map of the sky. And we have a region here where dust is blocking the visible light from getting to the Earth. Well, what would be a better wavelength if we wanted to detect galaxies in this part of the sky? You know, are there any there? Is there some wavelength we could use to detect them? And there is, infrared. Uh, there's still some data missing from this chart, but uh, we do not see a zone of avoidance. We do not see a zone of avoidance. There, the infrared information is able to pass through the dust and we see uh, galaxies all across the sky. The Milky Way is not in a special position on the sky. Uh, this uh, map created here uh, that we see some galaxies in some directions and no galaxies in other places on the sky. That's not because the Milky Way is at a special place in the universe. It's because there's dust in the disk of the Milky Way that blocks the light unless we use a wavelength of light that can more easily pass through the dust. And uh, that's here with the infrared. So the concept of the island universe, and this is a little out of sequence for the online textbook that uh, my course is using, astronomynotes.com, I think, maybe not ORG, astronomynotes.com. But uh, these uh, nebula, these fuzzy patches on the sky, when astronomers got large enough telescopes to gather enough light to see these dim objects, they could notice them, so late 1600s. And it was a suggestion that the nebula were island universes, their own little collection of stars, but not little, but lots of stars. And uh, there was a debate in the early 1900s that came to a head. You know, are these uh, nebula, are these island universes inside our galaxy, is our galaxy the entire universe or, or not? The, it's a serious debate in the early 1900s as uh, the data was a little bit incomplete. Now the question is, are the nebula inside or outside the Milky Way galaxy? What data would settle this question? You ought to be thinking, what data would settle this question? Well, here we go. 1920s, Cepheid stars were identified in some of the nebula. The Cepheid stars have a particular shape to their variation in brightness, uh, their luminosity versus time, and there is a connection between the period and the absolute uh, magnitude, the luminosity of the Cepheid. So these Cepheids were identified, their periods were measured, their apparent brightness at our telescopes were measured, then the period is used to find the true energy output of the Cepheid, to find its luminosity, to find its absolute magnitude. With the absolute magnitude and the apparent magnitude, you know, the absolute brightness and the apparent brightness, the connection between those two is distance. And distance can be calculated. When the distance was calculated, it found that these island universes definitely were not in the Milky Way. In fact, they are 30 times further from us than the diameter of the Milky Way. And uh, this was really the answer to the question. If, uh, if it's 30 times further away than the size of the Milky Way, it's not in our galaxy. These, in fact, are their own galaxies. Um, they stand alone, some, some larger, some smaller than the Milky Way galaxy, but they're... Um, they're definitely not inside the Milky Way. Distance shows us that they are uh, much separated from the Milky Way galaxy. In future videos, we'll talk about the distribution and spacing between galaxies. So you might try uh, writing down some questions to ask your instructor. Uh, Messier catalog, it's a list of objects that are not all galaxies. Some objects are inside our galaxy, the open clusters, the planetary nebula, the globular clusters in close proximity to our galaxy. Then there's a zone of avoidance gives us a clue that these uh, 
uh, nebula, some of these nebula are outside our galaxy because we don't see them in the zone of avoidance because they're beyond the, uh, the Milky Way galaxy and there's lots of dust in between us and these other galaxies. Then the island universe, this debate settled by finding Cepheid stars in these galaxies, calculating firmly an accurate number for the distance to these objects and finding that they're much further away than the size of the Milky Way galaxy. So keep reading on that and uh, ask some questions.